Within Mathematics Extension 2, we've been looking at mathematical induction that is of harder varieties than the kind you had a look at in Mathematics Extension 1. The first example we've had a look at today is when you have to prove for n equals, and then instead of starting at 1, it might be, say, in this case, 5, and then 6, and then 7. And that introduces a couple of extra little complexities, especially when you also throw in uh, some of the other cool things we can do under the nature of proof, like inequalities. So this particular question is somewhat challenging because it includes both of those aspects, and they've got it play together. And this solution, which I showed earlier today, uh, relied on the fact that we can begin with the assumption. That's the whole idea of mathematical induction we assume that the statement is true for n equals k and then we use that as our kind of foundation for proving that it's true for n equals k plus 1. And we went through this method and we had a look at, you know, having to invoke uh, the particular restriction on what values of n would work. So since uh, it's just here, since in this question um, n has to be greater than 4, when I assume that this statement is true for n equals k, um, I give the same restriction to k and then I have to invoke that restriction um, to actually make heads and tails or, or make any progress on of the inequality that I'm setting out to prove. Now, I did mention, and this is why I've labeled this as method one, I did say that this is not the only way to go about solving this. None of them is going to be, you know, I think dramatically easier than any of the others, but I do want to show you one of the other techniques that we can use, and if it fits better in your brain, makes more logical sense, uh, then absolutely using that within, you know, uh, any task or assessment you have to do is totally fine, so long as we set it out properly. So let me outline what method two is, first by reminding you that if I want to prove, uh, required to prove, that A is greater than B, one thing is larger than another, an equivalent statement, uh, this is true if and only if, when you subtract B from both sides, uh, it's still true. So I could say A minus B is greater than zero. Now this is a common technique because it's uh, relatively straightforward to prove that some algebraic object is going to be greater than zero because I can know if, if something is positive, it's, if it's a log or if it's squared, so long as we're in real number land, uh, you know you're going to be positive. So we're going to employ this technique here. So I'm going to call this method two. And I guess if we named this one here, beginning with the assumption, the n equals k statement, I guess I would call this one, uh, consider the left hand side, take away the right hand side, for the n equals k plus 1 statement. So if you recall, uh, the n equals k plus 1 statement looks like this, let me just highlight it. This is the n equals k plus 1 statement. I can't just say that 2 to the k plus 1 is greater than k plus 1 or squared because I haven't proved that that's true, that's my job. But instead what I can say is, well, if I take this left hand side and subtract the right hand side, uh, let's see if I can show that that's positive. I want to show that this term, take away this term, is greater than 0 and that'll be equivalent to the result I'm trying to prove. So. Let's have a go and set out to do that. Um, the left hand side, take away the right hand side, as just stated, will be 2 to the k plus 1 minus k plus 1 all squared. Okay, so when I start with this as a foundation, uh, as with previous proofs by mathematical induction in extension one, I want to try and manipulate this in such a way as to make the uh, inductive hypothesis or the assumption, I want to make it sort of appear within my working here. Now in this case, that is not too difficult to do. Remembering that, here is our assumption up here, I'll highlight it in a different colour. Here's my assumption, uh, 2 to the k is greater than k squared, so if I can find 2 to the k or k squared in there, I can do some sort of appropriate substitution. I'm going to show you how I do that. For starters, let's find, like where's the easiest place to find one of those terms in the assumption? And I think it's not too difficult to see that it's going to come from this uh, exponential term out the front. Uh, that k plus 1, I could break that apart to be 2 to the k times 2. If, if, if that makes sense, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got 2 to the power of 1, and so that's why you're adding these indices to get k plus 1. I still have this minus k plus 1 hanging out here on the end. Okay, now as I stated before, what I've now done, even though I only took one line, is to rearrange, do a very minor rearrangement to this particular expression in order to find a term that's in the assumption, and then I can do some substitution. But you have to be super careful, right? I've got an equation here. This thing is equal. The left-hand side and the right-hand side are identical. But what I'm trying to substitute in is actually 
and inequality. Now we're quite good at substituting equations into equations, we've been doing it for years, but how do you substitute an inequality into an equation? It's not as hard as it looks. For example, um, I think, let me just write this off to the side, I think it is fairly uncontroversial to say that 5 is greater than 4. So let's just imagine that this is kind of like our assumption, right? Now I can then relate this assumption to an equation um, if I can find you know, either of these terms within that equation. So for instance, I could say that 10 equals 5 plus 5. Again, a fairly uncontroversial statement. But now what I can do is I can take one of these terms, like say this 5 here, and if I replace it with 4, think about what this will mean. If I put 5 plus 4 over here, I have replaced this larger object with a smaller object. So therefore, what I end up with on this second line must obviously be smaller. So this side here is going to be smaller than this line up here, but this is equal to the left hand side. So therefore the left hand side 10 is going to be bigger than, greater than, 5 plus 4. So, if you are content to accept this logic, that you can substitute an inequality into an equation by turning it into an appropriate inequality, then I can do exactly the same thing here. I know that 2 to the k is bigger than k squared. So if I substitute this k squared in here, I'm now swapping out 2 to the k for k squared, so I'm putting in something smaller, right? Uh, I'll finish the rest of it, there's still the 2 there, and still this minus k plus 1 all squared, hanging out on the end. Clearly, uh, this line here is going to be smaller than this line here. Um, so therefore, I can say there's this greater than sign, and everything on the left hand side is not actually changed, right? Now this I, I find is the trickiest concept to wrap your head around, transforming an equation into a related inequality. If it's still sort of messing with your brain, I would encourage you to return back to this numerical example. If that convinces you, then really we're doing an identical process here. Instead of doing uh, 5 and 4, I have substituted uh, this 2 to the k for this k squared. Okay, now, once I have established this, I can now go to work and do some of my regular algebraic manipulation. What am I going to get here? Um, this greater than isn't going to change. I've got this 2k squared hanging out the front, and then uh, let's expand this before dealing with the minus sign that sits out uh, those brackets, outside those brackets. k squared plus 2k plus 1, there's my binomial expansion. Now I'll apply that minus sign. You can see clearly I'm going to get 2k squared minus a single k squared, so that leaves me with k squared out the front. Then I'm going to have minus 2k and then minus 1. Okay, so let's pause at this moment and breathe. What am I going to do now? Well, remember what my destination is, what my goal is, right? I want to try and show that this left hand side minus right hand side is greater than zero. If this is greater than zero, then my original inequality that I wanted is actually true. So I want to show that this thing is greater than zero. We've already shown before there are a bunch of different things that are unknown to be greater than zero. The product of two positive numbers will be positive. Um, the reciprocal of a positive number will be positive. And in this case, the square of a real number, I know it can't be negative. It's going to be greater than or equal to zero. So how do I make use of that fact? Well, you can see that this object here, uh, it can't be factorized in its current form. Uh, I can't think of a number, a pair of numbers rather, that adds to negative two and multiplies to negative one. But this is not difficult to modify in such a way that I can factorize it. For example, I can say that this is uh, k squared minus two k, and a thing that I know how to factorize is plus one. Uh, you can see here, this is not too difficult to reverse the expansion. You can't just make this bigger though, you know, we're, we're trying to, we've already established we can substitute a bigger thing for a smaller thing, because then you can link these inequalities, but I've just changed this small thing into a bigger thing, so that's, that's no dice, this is not necessarily true. So what I'm going to do is, rather than um, do an actual change here, I'm going to keep the line the same by subtracting 2. Think about this for a minute, right? Um, this minus 1, whoopsie daisy, this minus 1 uh, plus 1 minus 2 and this minus 1 are clearly equal in value. So that's, I haven't changed anything dramatic here. But the reason why this is useful is because this object out the front here can be easily factorized. It's going to be k minus 1 all squared. Yeah? Uh, and then I've got this minus 2 hanging out on the end there. 
So, what can I do now? Where can I go with this? Well, I'm going to just hit pause on this. Uh, I did this before in my previous proof, right? I've kind of gotten as far as I can in terms of, you know, some factorization and algebraic manipulation. I would, it'd be really convenient to me if this whole right hand side was just something squared, a real number squared, um, but it's not. I've got a squared and then I'm subtracting two. Um, you know, if, if k were um, equal to one, for example, this would be one take away one, it'd be zero squared minus two, that's negative, so it's not necessarily positive. But then, maybe your, um, maybe your cogs of turning, you've realized why um, such a situation is impossible. K can't possibly be one, K can't be two or three or four either, because I said right at the beginning when we introduced K, that K has to be greater than four, that's part of my assumption. So I need to, like I, I did in this earlier method, I need to invoke this, um, this domain restriction as it were on k, I need to invoke that in order to complete my proof. So let's go ahead and have a go at that. As mentioned, I'm just going to label this, call it inequality one and just uh, hit pause on it. And I'm gonna say, but hold on a second. I know that k can't just be anything, it's greater than four. Uh, therefore, I can sort of reshape this to turn it into uh, this object that I have up here on the right hand side of inequality one. How would I do that? Well, I'm going to subtract one because I've got, as you can see, a k minus one in there. Then I'm going to square it. Just be careful. Uh, when you square this uh, left hand side and then square the right hand side, the inequality, uh, its direction can change because if you're squaring a negative number, you've just multiplied both sides of your inequality by a negative. We know that flips around the inequality's direction. Um, I can know though that I'm not changing the inequality's uh, direction because, or since, k minus one, which is the thing I'm multiplying by, uh, that's going to be greater than zero and I'm getting that from uh, this fact up above here. Okay, so uh, I'm almost there. I've got k minus one all squared on the left hand side, but I actually need uh, k minus one all squared minus two. So therefore I'm going to say, uh, let's subtract two from both sides, that gives me seven. And this inequality, I can do a straight substitution into, you can see this is the right hand side of inequality one. So I can say, right, linking to inequality one, I'm actually gonna give that an extra line just so you can see that this is a different sort of direction of logic that I'm going in. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, all of this stuff is still here on the left hand most part of my inequality and then this part over here goes on the right hand side. And there we go, so this is bigger than this but I just established that this is bigger than seven. So uh, what can I say? Well, two to the k plus one minus k plus one all squared, that's greater than seven but seven is positive so that's gonna be greater than zero. Uh, I've got two to the k plus one minus k plus one all squared is greater than zero and this was the situation I wanted. This is the uh, a minus b is greater than zero situation that I was seeking all along. So finally, I can just restore this to the left on the left and the right on the right as required. And uh, from here, I think you're good to go. We've just proven the k plus one case is true, provided the k case is true. Um, and you still had to do you know, some of this work, right? You, you, cannot, you cannot get through this proof without somehow referring to the fact that k has to be bigger than four, because n has to be bigger than four. If you don't use that fact, um, you can't prove this possibly. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if you like this left-hand side takeaway, right-hand side way of approaching these questions, then go for it. Um, but I will say, the, the more tools that you can be comfortable um, working with, the more tools you have access to in your toolbox, the greater variety of problems you'll be able to solve.